Yeah, I think, uh, as I said at the half year when I was talking to you, that we didn't really subscribe to the, the issue that inflation was transitory. And um, we were very aggressive in the sense of moving forward with pricing initiatives across our company to recover those inflationary costs that we knew were coming. Uh, frankly speaking, Karen, we didn't expect them to be as strong as they were. Uh, if you take energy, for example, you know, when we were guiding the market in Q3, we said that we would be sort of 1.66 billion of, of EBITDA. Uh, uh, and that was on the basis of a, an energy cost that we would have expected to be 50 million lower uh, than we actually ended up getting. And, but despite that, you know, we increased our revenues in, in, in Q4 by 23%. Uh, and we increased our pricing as well um, by 6 or 7% to make sure that we were able to cover those costs. So, I mean, when I hear about people talking about inflationary, abate, inflationary cost abating, I just don't see that. Uh, we see still some very significant supply, train, supply chain constraints across our, our business, even as, 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 uh, as recently as yesterday. Uh, I was dealing with an issue where one of our major uh, businesses has run out of material in February and March because... It's just not there. So uh, I think the um, uh, the issue of inflation is still there. I think we're going to be seeing that throughout this coming year, and it's something that companies such as ours have to deal with. I think, Karen, we're lucky enough in the sense that we are in a sold-out position. Our business is, is going very strongly. We grew uh, very strongly at 8% last year across our, our, our regions, uh, and that puts us in a strong position uh, when, we, when we talk about the cost uh, recovery. Uh, Tony, let's bring up a couple of those big assumptions in the market then, that uh, if central banks move, and we've certainly seen it from the Bank of England, that you start to sort of crimp some of the demand story, which brings inflation back down or some of the supply chain issues in the meantime get fixed as well. Do you think there is going to be any impact from a tighter interest rate environment, whether it's in England, whether it's across in the United <laughs> States or in Europe at some point? I mean, at some point, there probably will be, but we don't see that in the short term. I mean, with the amount of stimulus that's going into the world uh, and with the amount of pent up demand that, that exists out there, I was listening to your show uh, recently um, and you were talking about people traveling again and, and, and moving again. And that's obviously extremely good for consumption. So on the one hand, you'll see perhaps a little bit of a slowdown on their e-commerce side. Not, that's not to say it's not going to grow. It's going to continue to grow, but maybe not at the hectic pace it did during the pandemic. Uh, but on the other side, you'll see the recovery of, of uh, uh, business areas that, that are related to travel and leisure, which is, of course, also good for, for our business. So I don't see it in the, in the short to medium term, but obviously in the long term, depending on how interest rates go, depending on what wage inflation and things like that, there, there could be uh, at some future point. But uh, certainly with the stimuluses, Karen, that we see right now going into the markets, uh, we don't see anything that's going to affect us in the very short term. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.